In mid-September, the CDC released an interim playbook for how jurisdictions can optimally distribute the COVID-19 vaccine. The playbook contains a host of guidelines for training and planning, but a major portion is dedicated to breaking the population down into three phases or groups. Phase one is intended to provide the vaccine to those who need it most. This is going to include healthcare workers who are directly or indirectly interacting with patients, and in a slightly delayed phase, the critical workforce. This is everyone from food packaging to teachers to childcare providers. This phase also includes everyone over the age of 65. Phase two is going to continue the focus on those at a heightened risk of severe COVID-19. We're looking at those with asthma, diabetes, and those in group quarters like university students, and those without insurance, just to name a few. Finally, phase three is the remainder of the general population. This is everyone who's at a lower risk for severe COVID-19. Now, in the example on the screen, we're looking at a dashboard created with ArcGIS dashboards. We have dynamic charts, we have indicators of the total population in each group, and on-the-fly ordering estimates, assuming 100 doses of vaccine per order unit. This dashboard also assumes that the vaccine will come in two doses, which is the case with multiple vaccine candidates. From a technical perspective, getting to this point was not a massive undertaking. And we've outlined how we've interpreted the playbook to get these values for each population phase using data in the ArcGIS ecosystem. We'll return to this topic at the end of the video, but for now, let's explore the other applications. In the second application, we're looking at the potential distribution network for phase one. This would be those residents who are part of the critical workforce and those at the highest risk for severe COVID-19. In this sample region, we are looking at approximately 700,000 individuals. In the big picture, phase one is going to be a fairly limited network, so we've used the location allocation tools in ArcGIS to select the top 40 hospitals that can serve as a distribution site. Then, for each census tract, we've identified the nearest distribution site within 60 minutes of driving. This returns a few outputs. Number one, we can estimate the population that might be served by any one of these sites. This is illustrated by the size of the circle. We can even get a breakdown of the demographics for each site. And number two, we can identify those census tracts that cannot access a distribution site within 60 minutes of driving, here highlighted in red. Now in this sample region, we notice that a large majority of those who cannot reach the distribution sites are on the edges of the state lines. This might highlight a need for data sharing and interstate collaboration. But let's say we want to take control and select a new location for a distribution to cover these populations. We can explore that in this final application. Here are those isolated populations highlighted now in orange. With a widget in the ArcGIS web app builder, we can simulate selecting a site and seeing how much of the additional population we can capture. We can also see the impact of selecting a facility from another layer, like federally qualified health centers or commercial establishments. There are many authoritative layers like these that we can choose to source directly from ArcGIS. If you'd like to explore these resources yourself, visit the link in the description below or visit coronavirus-resources.esri.com. Now, for this demonstration, we made some estimations. If your local jurisdiction has specific values on the number of individuals in the designated workforce categories or on healthcare professionals, you are encouraged to use that data to supplement this analysis. In our example, to estimate the number of healthcare workers who directly interface with patients, we used the definitive healthcare occupancy metrics from hospitals and an estimated 0.5 healthcare workers per bed. In other words, that's two beds for one healthcare worker. That gives us our phase 1A population. In phase 1B, we used a variable from the ESRI enrichment tool related to the total workforce. While the CDC and CISA offer a specific list of who is critical, we made a general estimate that 25% of the workforce might be deemed critical. We then subtracted the healthcare workers that were accounted for earlier. 
we used another variable from the data browser to also add in the total senior population. Finally, to simulate rollover, this is those that were eligible for phase one that actually ended up getting vaccinated later, we multiplied this phase by 75% and rolled part of the population into phase two. In phase two, we used market analysis variables from the data browser. This includes the percentage of the population using insulin, weight loss drugs, and inhalers. Additionally, we've added in those in group quarters and those without insurance. Then we also added in the remaining 25% from phase one. Finally, in phase three, we've subtracted phases one and two from the total population. This gives us everybody else. Again, we hope to demonstrate here that ArcGIS is a great platform for this type of segmentation and that there is a whole suite of data products available to help you make these determinations.